Center, we're now approaching the last and final stop, Pier 11 Wall Street. This is Pier 11 Wall Street, last and final stop. People waiting to get on this ferry over here. The city actually subsidizes these ferry rides, and the ferries operate at a loss without the subsidies. So the city is losing a lot of money on these ferry rides, but. In return, they expect people to take them to promote tourism and get additional tax revenue from their jobs. Many people say that the money will be better invested in the subway system or the bus network, but for now, the ferry system is as it is. Here we have the ferry system for the East River route which goes all the way up to Long Island City and follows a coastal path in Brooklyn. Also there's a route for the Rockaway route which stops in Sunset Park, Brooklyn and then Rockaway.
the East River Valley is pretty popular. It serves a lot of the coastal communities. The Astoria route where I came from serves Astoria, Roosevelt Island, Long Island City by the Pepsi Cola sign, um, 34th Street in Manhattan, and then the Brooklyn Navy Yard and Pier 11 Wall Street. Those are the stops. Here's South Street. I'm going to walk one block in and maybe two blocks in and then wrap around to the battery it's a pretty nice day out right now not too hot two days ago we had a tropical storm of all things hit new york city <laughs> You know, I might check out over here. There's an open street called um, Pearl Street. The city has closed off these streets to most car traffic to allow uh, people to walk around more easily and to encourage social distancing measures. Actually, what I'll do is, since I know a lot of people work in this building next to me, I will showcase it and then I'll go up onto that street. So I'm going to walk one block to the south here. and show you the most populated building in New York City according to office space. That would be 55 Water Street. It's 686 feet tall. And there's three and a half billion square feet of office space in there. Here it is, 55 Water Street. Convenient if you work here and you take the ferry to work because you just get off the ferry and it's next door. Can't get any more convenient than that. But there's a lot of companies that are located here at 55 Water Street. Emblem Health is the headquarters of Emblem Health. There's also the HIP plan of New York. The Standard & Poor's company is here, FXCM. And the New York City Department of Transportation has offices in the building. I, I even went inside this building one time for a job interview. I'm not gonna say which company it was for. But uh, the inside is very modern, it's very nice. Can't say too much else about its uh, office building. Here I also want to showcase something called the Elevated Acre. This is a nice little spot. The Elevated Acre. Not too many people know about this place. I like to call it like the hidden high line spot of Manhattan. This was closed off for a little bit due to COVID, but I don't know when they reopen this. 
I don't even know if too many office workers are allowed back into 55 Water Street. It's gonna be hard to imagine that 55 Water Street still has the same capacity and ability, ability to let people in with all the people that work there. Look, we got some nice hydrangeas here. Although some of those flowers look a little bit past their prime. Look at this, there's even a photo shoot here. People come up here for a photo shoot. So cool. They're really professional. They got all the lighting set up and everything. Light diffuser. Looks like this isn't as secret anymore because there are a bunch of people up here. But normally there won't be that many people up here. Take a look. Down there is Governor's Island. We got more piers of Brooklyn Bridge Park. I also see Brooklyn Heights over there. And the Brooklyn Bridge. And then over here you have a nice lawn. A nice lawn for people to hang out. Do some exercises, get a picnic going. All that nature. Right here, it's pretty nice. Gotta be careful of these steps here. Look how steep it is. Don't want to trip and fall. You probably break a bone. Here's another side of 55 Water Street. I don't think too many people are using this space now from 55 Water Street. It's just uh, locals who have heard about this hidden spot and are now just discovering it as a cool place to hang out. One of my hidden secrets of New York that I recommend people check out. I know it's a nice little perk that these office workers have. You come right down here to the elevator acre and you get some fresh air with an awesome view of Manhattan and Brooklyn. But now on my way to Battery Park where I'll be ending the video. Hey. All right, let's cross the street. I only got five seconds or so to cross. And I'll make my way over to Pearl Street. Here it is folks, 55 Water Street. This side is S&P Global. From the facade there, they have the name. And I guess this side is the Emblem Health side. And also there's a little sign there for New York City DOT. There's also a Vietnam War Memorial, uh, Vietnam War Memorial here, right next to 55 Water Street. 
that's pretty neat to check out also. Alright, on to Cuenta Slip. And then on to Pearl Streets. You know what I'll do? Let me check out Stone Street because that's the main attraction here. Everyone out dining and hanging out, having a good time. This is Pearl Street, the block that's closed off the traffic, but Stone Street's right here. This is where all the people in the financial district hang out after work, especially during the summertime. I know this area was was a hard hit during COVID when restaurants were only able to do takeout only but now they're able to do outdoor dining but this is what this area was known for anyway outdoor dining so we should see how things have changed now all right here's Stone Street folks was popular before with the tourists and I guess now with the locals too Look at this, so cool. Great to see people outside here, enjoying their meals, having drinks. It's like nothing has changed here. But now the only difference is people are wearing masks now. They need to be more cognizant of their health and safety. But look at this, this lively here. I don't notice it as busy as it can be, but there's still a good amount of people here and I'm happy for them. I'm happy for people here. So I'll make a right here, go back onto Pearl Street, and then make my way towards the Battery Park. By the way, a little bit of history here. The names Pearl Street and Water Street are references to the former Manhattan shoreline. Pearl Street was where the sand used to be, where all the pearls were. And then Water Street, there used to be water there. But of course, a lot of that was landfill and the shoreline got extended it's interesting when Superstorm Sandy came to New York City the shoreline reverted back to its original position there was water going all the way up to Pearl Street so one of the risks of expanding the shoreline using artificial means is that the uh, shoreline is more susceptible to natural disasters. Here's the other side of the Stone Street restaurant walk. Adrienne's Pizzeria. Here's the Stone Street Tavern. You're the back of our tavern. Please walk around, to, around the block to 52 Stone for the entrance. But anyway, if you want some uh, peace and quiet, you can come here. Compared to one block over Stone Street, it's loud and a lot of young people there hanging out. You can always use takeout, I guess. Now here's a secret I want to show people. This is a look back into when 
New York used to be called New Amsterdam from the Dutch colonial days. Unfortunately, this is a little bit dirty, but you could probably make up some of the foundation of this old building here. Neat little area. It's what New York used to look like. there we got uh, Francis Tavern George Washington spent many months there a lot of history in that tavern a lot of speeches made there preparation from the British invading it's also a museum there you can take a look I don't know if it's gonna be open anytime soon because of COVID So I'm going to go straight and go right into Battery Park. I'm sure many, many people would like to know how Battery Park is doing nowadays. Battery Park is a tourist attraction. Many people go to Battery Park just for the views of the Statue of Liberty and to catch a boat to the same place. Oftentimes there are a lot of hustlers who use the Battery Park area as ways to sell tickets to boats which go around the statue itself and not actually land there and sell tickets to buses to New Jersey. It's all part of a scheme. Make sure you only buy from official vendors inside um, the fort over there or statuecruises.com. The name of the fort eludes me right now. It's um, Castle Clinton is called. Only buy tickets from Castle Clinton or online. If it wasn't for COVID, I would be at the Statue of Liberty twice already this year because I had tickets to go in March. The end of March, those were canceled and also another ticket in May that was cancelled as well but if you're interested in seeing what Liberty Island looks like as well as my adventure to the statue itself you can check out one of my previous videos that was the last time I visited it, the Statue of Liberty back in 2018 Now I'm waiting for those refunds for those two tickets and I'm sure the um, their systems can't handle refunds right now or probably they're very understaffed to process them all. I forgot to mention about this. This is the former U.S. Customs House. Now it's turned into a U.S. Bankruptcy Court as well as a museum for the Native American Indian. Well, let's see how many people are to here today inside Battery Park. I expect this to be very peaceful. Maybe I'll be able to walk into Castle Clinton. By the way, that bus there, the downtown connection, is a free ride around the downtown area. I've never taken it myself, but it's a neat little way to travel around Lower Manhattan without having to pay anything. Yeah, specific shuttle bus shuttle bus stops. The 
see the sign here warns people that Statue Cruise is the only authorized boat to Statue Liberty and Ellis Island. Here we go, the other side of the U.S. Customs House. Very grand building. And here's one of a uh, the vintage cannon. It looks very cool. And this is one of the original subway station entrances that are still around at Bowling Green. Very unique. Alright, so Battery Park is very quiet compared to a year ago. There are people out here getting some sun, they're having picnics, so that's good. But my destination right now is towards Castle Clinton and also to see the view of the Statue of Liberty. Here's the Battery Urban Farm. Good to see that there's vegetables and fruits growing in Lower Manhattan. New York can't all be about tall buildings and metal and concrete. Alright, it looks like Castle Clinton is closed as I expected. It's too bad because I wanted to go in there and take a look, see what it looks like now. The well, Castle Clinton is a relic of America's past. This was used during the Revolutionary War owned by the National Park Service just like the Statue of Liberty I don't know when the Statue of Liberty will open back up but you can bet that I wanted to open up again and be able to visit something I should have done much sooner had I known that things would be shut down but I guess the best we can do is to view the Statue of Liberty at a distance. I'm sure the ferry operator Statue Cruises is probably losing a lot of money right now. Storing these boats and not having anybody ride them must be devastating. I don't know what this um, is all about but it's very interesting. This sculpture. Statue of Liberty sightseeing tours. Oh wow, now Statue Cruise is doing one hour sightseeing tours instead. But empty here. Normally there'll be lines to get into this building just for the security to get to the Statue of Liberty. I guess they're getting ready to reopen now. Statue Cruises has information on social distancing measures.
All right, it looks like it's uh, blocked off there. I can't go down there. So this is the closest I'd be able to get to the Statue of Liberty. But its official name is called Liberty Enlightening the World. It was designed by French sculptor Auguste Bartoli. And the metal framework was designed by Gustave Eiffel, who also designed the Eiffel Tower. Dedicated on October 28th, 1886. And to many, the Statue of Liberty represented the first site of setting foot in the USA. The statue is named after the Roman liberty goddess Libertas, or Libertas, and carries a tablet in his hand carrying the Declaration of Independence date, July 4th, 1776. He used to be able to go up to the torch, but in 1916 that stopped. Really quiet here, except for the music. <laughs> it's pretty relaxing to be honest, to be able to come here without too many people walking around. You can look at it. Over here is a World War II monument. I guess I'll end it here. As the names of many many people from all branches of the armed forces marine corps army air forces navy over there 1941 and 1945 erected by the usa in proud and grateful remembrance of her sons who gave their lives in their service Behind me is the Statue of Liberty. Anyway, folks, if you enjoyed this walk from the New York City Ferry Terminal at Pier 11 Wall Street all the way to Battery Park, where I got as close to the Statue of Liberty as I could, unfortunately, I can't go there yet. Be sure to smash that like button, subscribe for some more videos and live streams, and I'll see you all next time, folks. Take it easy, stay safe, and take care. Bye-bye.